Well now, let's see what's on Twitter today. Why, Mr. President? Why? Okay, so let's get into this. China announced on the 23rd of August that they are increasing tariffs on several kinds of U.S. import goods. This happened to be the same day that the Fed was meeting to discuss what changes, if any, were necessary for the Fed rate. Now, the president doesn't like it when foreign nations escalate trade wars instead of coming to the negotiating table. He also doesn't like it when the Fed refuses to lower the Fed rate with a partially inverted bond yield curve. Honestly, I'm not certain that anyone who follows the markets likes it when trade wars escalate or when the Fed refuses to act with warning signs of recession sounding off in the markets. The president, however, obviously lost his temper. I showed you the tweets, but here they are again. Someone, anyone, please take the president's Twitter account away from him? This is ridiculous. Oh, so now you support censorship, huh, Roast? You know, I've always supported self-censorship. It's not just what we say, but how we say it and when. There's a time and a place for everything. And as for these tweets, yeah, this wasn't it. This was a golden opportunity for the president to look, you know, presidential. So much for that notion. So when the president orders American companies to stop doing business with China, what might he mean by that? The United States is a free country, after all. I've found no references in the Constitution to authority given to the president to order private citizens not to do business with companies in other nations. I have, however, found Title II of Public Law 95-223. The International Emergency Economic Powers Act, IEEPA, authorizes the President to declare a state of emergency and regulate international commerce in response to an unusual or extraordinary threat coming from outside the United States. This act is what authorizes the sanctions against Iran and North Korea. It's also what authorizes the continuation of the embargo against Cuba. Under IEEPA, the president can issue an executive order which declares that state of emergency and imposes sanctions against China. He can block commerce with China in response to the policies and actions of the Chinese government. Just as has been done with the Sudan since 1997, Lebanon since 2007, and North Korea since 2008. Now that is a really big stick to use against a country with exports over half a trillion dollars worth of goods and services to the United States. It'll also hit the U.S. pretty hard with nearly $180 billion worth of our own exports gone. The total amount of trade involved is nearly three quarters of a trillion dollars in value. Think about what a trade embargo between the U.S. and China will do to the global economy for a minute. Great googly moogly. I looked at the figures. The difference between China's balance of trade with the U.S. and China's overall balance of trade has an interesting parallel. They are roughly the same amount. If China loses the ability to trade with the U.S., then China effectively loses their trade surplus. Nearly 20% of the Chinese economy depends on foreign trade, and trade with the U.S. represents about 18% of that total trade volume. The U.S. can quite possibly find a new source of most of the principal imports from China, including by kick-starting our own production in many cases. Four of the five top commodities which are produced in Chinese factories for the U.S. market could easily begin production here. Machinery, furniture and bedding, 
toys and sports equipment, and plastics. The top import commodity from China, however, is an absolute doozy, electrical machinery. It will take a while to generate replacement capacity, either here or in other countries, to handle the sudden loss of $152 billion in electrical machinery imports. So why should I be mad that the president tweeted to U.S. companies ordering them to find other sources of products? Because it tips his hand and it tanked the markets. The tweets about Jerome Powell, the Fed chair which he appointed, made the president's tweets about finding other sources worse. Effectively, with just a few tweets, the president delivered a body blow to the U.S. economy and dropped the Dow almost 575 points. Good God. It's not what he did. It's how he did it. There's a cultural difference involved here, and President Xi now faces a threat to his reputation and power. He may not be able to back down now without losing his job, and perhaps much more than that. China is still a communist nation, remember? The Chinese Communist Party could very well decide that it's time for a new Chinese premier, and they could decide that the former president of China needs to retire from public life entirely and disappear permanently. The U.S. president should have talked directly to President Xi when making this statement, privately, instead of putting it on blast and panicking the markets. A decent trading day turned into panicked selling because investors are always trying to stay ahead of the trends. Next time, Mr. President, use public airtime to make your announcement and make it sound like a measured response. Don't sound angry. Sound regretful. Give U.S. companies a reasonable time frame to adjust their suppliers for imported goods. The same time frame gives China one more chance to come to the table in good faith and negotiate a fair and balanced trade deal and save face. The markets won't go into panic selling. You stand a decent chance of getting the deal you want for America, and you look presidential doing it. I hate to say this as a longtime Trump supporter, but if you can't do that, sir, then American voters will look for someone who can.